We're going to be talking about DMAs, which are direct memory access, IOs, input output, IRQs, interrupt requests, and memory in general. We've got on the left here a typical IRQ setup by default, where we've got under IRQ0, as we talked about earlier, is the timer. Next to IRQ1 is the keyboard. IRQ typically would send a connection through to IRQ9. We've got an IRQ3, which is for COM port 2 or COM port 4. IRQ4 for COM port 1 or COM port 3. And as we talked about earlier, these are the serial ports on the back of your computer system. We've got an IRQ5, which connects to LPT2 ports, which are the parallel ports where we've got sound, sound cards, network cards, typically. Next, we've got an IRQ6, which is typically used for the floppy disk controller. IRQ7, which typically connects to the LPT1 port, which is usually used for printers. IRQ8 is for the clock. 9, as we said, is connection to IRQ2. Uh, 10, 11 and 15 are usually left blank in order for you to form connections. We've got um, an IRQ port of 12 for the mouse, 13 for the coprocessor, and 14 for the hard disk controller. Now IRQs, what they are, they're simply interrupt requests and they tell the processor when it needs to pay attention to any particular um, device. And when we refer to polling, it's when the processor checks each task in turn to see if it needs attention. Typically we need to have our interrupt requests in order to switch between multiple tasks. So a processor shares its time by doing so. We can open up in the device manager, usually in the Windows operating system, and we can see which particular IRQs, which devices are using any one particular IRQ. As we see here, this system is using zero as a system timer. Uh, number one is for the keyboard, and we've got th three and four for the COM ports. Number six is for the floppy disk controller. Number eight is for the clock. And we've got number nine, we've got a compliance system. Number 12 we see is used for the mouse. 13 is usually a numeric data processor or math processor. Number 14 is for the hard disk controller, the IDE channel. And 15 is being used for the secondary IDE channel. And then here by default, whichever was open for us for our system, got an unknown device on IRQ5. We've got our sound device on IRQ16 and it's shared with our video adapter. We've got a modem on 17. We've got an Ethernet card on 18 and we've got our standard um, USB host controllers on 19 and 23. We see devices that are sharing the IRQs uh, any device can share an IRQ, but they cannot be used at the same time. So this is typically good for devices that we won't be using at the same time. If we do use them at the same time, then we might have some conflicts with our IRQs, and we might have to make some adjustments. So we're going to shut this down, and we're going to talk about the DMAs, the de Direct Memory Access. So DMA is short for Direct Memory Access. We typically have 0 to 6 DMA channels, and we've got transfer rates between 8 bits and 16 bits. So I'm just going to open up the computer here, and we see that this computer is using DMA channel 2 for its floppy disk controller, and we see that it's also using DMA channel 4 for its direct memory access controller. And the way that DMA works is it transfers data to and from your system memory directly. 
rather than involving the CPU. So it saves a little bit of time in the process. And it's for devices uh, designed to function a little bit better and efficiently without needing to access the CPU. And this is typically used for, as we hear, the hard disk controllers, the floppy disk controllers that we have here available on this system. Next we're going to talk about I.O. or input-output. I.O. Um, addresses can be shared by different devices. Their addresses are typically in memory that are assigned for specific devices to use when exchanging information with the rest of the devices or components in the computer. I'm just going to open up this computer's and we see that we've got a whole bunch of uh, memory locations here and we've got the particular device. On the left here we've got uh, typical configuration. We've got the I.O. address here listed in hexadecimal form. And we've also got the port that the particular device is going to be using for that. Typically we see here that COM port 1 would be using this particular memory address and then we would go into our device manager and we would find the particular memory address that's going to relate to that COM port and we can see which devices are going to be using that. And then finally we're just going to talk a little quickly about memory and we see here that that we have the particular memory location and the device that's going to be using it.